We're going to speak to Emma Webber, who's Barnaby Webber, Webber's mother. You remember, of course, that Barnaby Webber uh, was the young man uh, who was stabbed just 18, 19 years of age in Nottingham alongside his friend Grace O'Malley Kumar uh, and school caretaker Ian Coates on the streets of Nottingham in the early hours uh, of the morning when they were simply walking home. Uh, they were attacked by Valdo Calacane. Um, and Emma Webber wants to talk to us today because uh, a judge-led inquiry into those Nottingham attacks is going to take place. We'll find out what she makes of it. Emma, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, very good morning to you. Um, morning. Are you encouraged by this inquiry that's going to take place? Do you welcome it? Yeah, of course. Um, it, it's it's something, uh, considering what's happened um, again over the last week, particularly with Nottinghamshire Police Force, um, it, it just it proves how important it is that uh, proper uh, questions are asked and people are held to account and have to an uh, answer truthfully. I think what we have to stress is that there's no point in doing this unless it's a statutory one. Yeah. It's got to have teeth. Um, for, for sort of want, want of a better, yeah. better word, um, and a judge-led statutory one will give us that. Yes, absolutely right, because um, you're also calling for the resignation uh, of the Chief Constable of Nottingham Police Force, I believe, um, because uh, the curtailing of open and honest reporting of the case is, well, it has always been an issue for you, isn't it? Yeah, I think the, um, the, the, the issues that, that we as three families have with regards to the uh, police force, but particularly the leadership, um, and primarily, I suppose that comes to the top, comes to the chief constable. Yeah. Um, we feel that they're abhorrent um, in the way that they behave. It's toxic culture. Um, and the way that they've treated us as families is abysmal. But um, trying to recently, we found out last week that they've been trying to shackle the, the media, uh, namely the, the Nottinghamshire Post, mm. who've, who've been, um, quite frankly, outstanding um, throughout this whole horror. Um, it, it just it, it filled me with such dismay that they would waste their time and resources on an extensive, um, uh, completely unwarranted uh, attack on them to try and uh, to, to the press standards right. um, with regards to what we feel was very open and honest reporting and challenging reporting last year, right. as the media should be. Sure. And what is it that they were trying to stop them from doing then? Yeah, so, so what happened, oh my goodness, where to begin? So what happened last year, um, when the truth began to emerge that on top of the failures to apprehend and, and stop him prior and, and the concerns we had with regards to the quality of the investigation, we also found out about the misconduct of officers yeah. during um, during the initial um, part and then ongoing of the attacks um, with inappropriate WhatsApp messages, accessing of video footage, files um, and sharing, etc. We were never told as a family about that in advance and we found out about it, funnily enough, through the Nottingham Post mm. and then we drip-fed information as, as we begged for it from the Chief Constable. And as, as, that, as more and more came Came out, including the fact that her son, who's a serving officer, is actually in that WhatsApp group. It raised our suspicions about mm. no wonder she's trying to keep it quiet. So they decided to hold um, a closed media briefing, to which I believe 35 members of the press attended, such as the national interest in the story. Right. But they were forced to sign an agreement. And it wasn't an NDA, which mm. is a, a non-disclosure, but it was effectively that you can't come into this meeting unless you agree not to report on it. So it's essentially the same thing. And, and all, all they did within that was, was was go through the details of everything that we had been raising and asking anyway. There was nothing new. The sentencing had happened. Um, it was just clearly a, an ill-judged attempt to to um, quieten us down. Mm. And, I mean, uh, there was a panorama programme as well. I mean, there seems to have been so many terrible things that have happened since that yeah. terrible event itself, which which has, must have been so awful. You know, I'm a parent as well. I mean, I've, I've got kids now that are about the same age as, um, yeah. uh, as yours, Barnaby, and, and Grace uh, is, is his good friend. Um, panorama did a show which also was full of inaccuracies. What was that all about? It, yeah, um, Mike, it just doesn't, it just doesn't stop... Um, but I think nor will we. I think we'll we will uh, we'll maintain our position that that we will we will challenge and we'll correct any anything that goes wrong. So Panorama um, ran a program uh, on the twelfth of August. Um, so I can't remember the title. Some of that uncovering the truth. But essentially, it, we weren't involved. We weren't advised um, at all mm. or asked to participate in it. And it was focusing on the mental health trust in Nottinghamshire and their failures. Um, with regards to Valdo Calacay. Oh, I remember um, this. This was the one where they spoke to his family, right? Yeah, and yeah. I think the, uh, yeah, I guess, going to say, 
they, they had the scoop of talking to the Calacane family first and foremost. And, and we were told to give you context of dates. We had a telephone call from Nav, who's the lead journalist for, for East Midlands BBC, who was, who was interviewing on the 26th of July. And this was due to air on, and it did air on the 12th of August. Mm. So what's that, two, two and a half weeks? Yeah. And, and we were told it was happening. We were told that um, we weren't involved when I asked, why haven't we been involved? They said, because you effectively had your say in um, something called the big cases that BBC ran back in January, um, raised real concerns about it. Um, were asked, we asked if we could be given an overview of what was going to be contained within it, such as a trauma. Mm. I mean, you said, you've got children. Can you imagine what what the uh, Kumars and what we and what the Coates go mm. through on a very regular basis with regards to awful information about this monster and what he did to our to our children. And um, the the way that we've been um, communicated and dealt with by Cam Whiteman, who's the editor of Panorama, is we feel very poor, uh, very dismissive. It's cold. Um, uh, all of the concerns that we've raised in admissions, we had a letter back a couple of days ago, which is quite dismissive. And so we're taking consideration and advice from our legal team who are supporting us mm. because we've got a big fight on our hands already with regards to all the errors with the, with the um, NHS and with the police yeah. um, and with the whole judicial system. But, you know, there's a right and a wrong and there's a way to conduct yourself. And I think that we that what happened was there was a very unbalanced piece that came across with some very big omissions that... that um, I think the public deserves the truth. Mm. We deserve the truth. I'm not asking for anything more or less than that. Um, but we will, we will have to keep pursuing all of these things. But it's it's exhausting. But it's really traumatic. Sure. It must be because you yeah. know, of course, at the back of your mind is always going to be that this guy is going to be let go. You know, when they decided not to yeah. uh, to prosecute him for murder and accept his plea for manslaughter, putting him in, um, you know, a, a relatively uh, low security unit. And I know people will say, oh no, but he can't get out and all of that. But it is a, it's not a prison, you know, it's a mental health facility, isn't it? That's exactly it. What, what Valdo Calacane is, he's a patient, he's not a prisoner. There's no penal element, there's no punishment for what he's done. And when you know the details of the, of the, the, the prior planning, the savagery of the attacks, the, the, the choosing of victims, um, the, high, the, the, you know, the hiding and stockpiling of the weapons, the changing of clothes, there's, there's so many questions that are unanswered, the lack of toxicology. Mm. This is a man that used a weapon, uh, used a van as a, as a lethal weapon, and the police didn't even bother to, to um, breathalyse him, let alone test him for drugs. Mm. And, and, you know, it, so, so he's ended up in a high-secure unit with a, an indefinite hospital order, but if you dig into indefinite hospital orders... 87% um, of them are out within 10 years right. and 98% are out within 20 years. Well, I remember um, there was we, one very shortly after he went in, wasn't there, who was let out after two years, who'd kicked a woman to death. And I remember you guys yeah. raising that as an issue. But we yeah, look at the it, justice it, system here all the time and there's so many holes in it. It is. It's flawed. It's outdated. It's archaic. And we had a meeting. We've had meetings with so many senior new government, old government people, but one that stands out in, in, um, in ministers in my mind was with Alex Chalk in December of last year, the then Justice mm. Minister. And he said to me, Emma, just because it's a law, it doesn't mean it's right. And just because it's a law, it doesn't mean it, it shouldn't change. And I think that's something that I've, I've held on to because uh, we can't bring our children back. We can't bring Ian back. Um, what we can do is fight really hard to keep that monster away, mm. hopefully get some justice for him and for all the people that did wrong and didn't do their jobs properly, accountability. But most importantly, I suppose now, it's about public safety. And we have to look at getting the laws changed. We have to bring in a different tier system for homicide laws. Um, we have to completely change the way that we're looking um, after mental, mentally um, unwell people that have got violent tendencies because, yes, they have to be protected. But if you don't have public safety, you've got nothing. Well, exactly. You might as well not bother. And you saw the, yeah. the Home Secretary this week, I think, was yeah, it last week? Last week, yeah. Yeah, yeah on, on our list. We've, so we've seen the Attorney General, we've seen the Health Secretary, we've seen the Prime Minister, we've seen the Home Secretary and the Victims Minister now of, of the Labour administration. And do you know what? They're listening I have to say that. I have to be optimistic so I don't want to be the voice of doom. But we will hold them to everything they say. I think they know that. Mm. <laughs> um, and also, uh, the, as I say, we have to make sure that the inquiry is um, a statutory judge-led one. We have to get people on the stands, like we're seeing now, 
uh, at the post office inquiry yeah. um, who are having to answer. The IOPC um, are allegedly investigating, well, not allegedly, they are supposed to be investigating four different complaints mm. with regards to um, poor standards from Leicestershire and Nottinghamshire Police. But we haven't even got off the ground with that because they um, there's, there's grave concerns with regards to the terms of reference. Um, and if you don't agree the right... If you don't agree at the outset, then they're not going to investigate, and we're, we're you know we're, we're we're feeling pushback from them. We're we're feeling the reports, and investigations we've had so far, some have been very good. The CQC one was alarmingly good. Um, the one into the CPS was, as Sanjoy Kumar puts it, um, poor homework, um, like a like a sixth form essay, um, and a not a good one as that. So you know we can't have that. We have to make sure it's 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 full, it's open. And what we're asking for is the truth, Mike. We're not we're not um, on a witch hunt. No. Uh, we, we we just must make sure people that do wrong are held to account. People it's don't not do their jobs. Much, is it? You wouldn't can't. think. You wouldn't <laughs> think it was asking much. No, it's not. I don't think we're asking for much. But what I am demanding is that that we get those answers because Barney deserves that. Mm. Grace and Ian deserve that. And all the other people that, even since their attacks and murders, have, have lost their lives or been very seriously injured and been failed by various different agencies and can't change the world, can't change... And I don't want to change the, the you know, the politics in this country, but what I do want to do is a tiny voice that we've been given... Um, thrust upon us as we have to use it and you know thank you for letting us speak not at all um, well so we'd like to help in any way we can so so do, keep in touch with us anything we can do we'll be very, we will very it's happy nice, to, nice do to see it. you Mike. emma thanks you. very much indeed talk to you soon emma weber there barney weber's mother um what an amazing woman and um, because what a terrible terrible thing to happen to any family um and to happen to her family and also to grace o'malley kumar's family and also the family of caretaker ian coates struck down uh, in the prime of their lives all of them uh, Ian was a little bit older, but still, um, you know, went out to work one morning, didn't expect to be attacked by some maniac who's now sitting in uh, a place where he could get released from if some bozo in the probation department and the parole board thinks he's all right now. That's the trouble. That's the nightmare.